My name is Stephen Brams. I'm a professor of politics at New York University. And the subject I'm going to talk about tonight is game theory and humanities. But I'd like to say something about game theory uh, in general. Uh, game theory really got started with the publication of a book by John von Neumann and Oscar Morgenstern called Theory of Games and Economic Behavior in 1944 at the height of the uh, World War II. And uh, it was expected to make a major contribution to the study, to the prosecution of the war. But it was very dense mathematically and not well understood even by mathematicians. But by the 1950s, uh, we began to see a better understanding of the ideas of game theory. And strategists began thinking about this in terms of uh, nuclear deterrence and arms races, again, particularly with our rival, the Soviet Union. And uh, they began to uh, try to write down games, which would capture uh, the strategic uh, possibilities in our relationship with the Soviet Union. Uh, and in the 1960s and 1970s, uh, economists became more interested in game theory. Political scientists uh, also took up the cudgel. And now it's a um, major subfield in the social science, particularly economics, to a less extent political science. It's even um, applied in biology, evolutionary biology, to study competition among the species. Uh, so it's a very broad-ranging theory, and I've been particularly interested in recent years in applying it to the humanities, by which I mean literature, history, philosophy, religion, theology, uh, in particular the Bible, stories in the Bible, uh, and uh, have written a book called Game Theory and Humanities, which um, gives examples of this in these different subjects. And I'll begin with some of these examples, uh, starting with the Bible. Uh, I looked at the story of uh, Abraham and his attempted sacrifice of Isaac, which was not consummated. An angel intervened. And I try to look at the motivations Abraham had to follow God's command. Was he being uh, sincere, just following God's command? Or was he strategic? Did he think? God would prevent the sacrifice at the last moment, which he did through the angel. Uh, and I looked at other stories, beginning with Adam and Eve, uh, uh, Moses' confrontation with Pharaoh, um, and uh, then got interested in philosophy of religion and uh, theology uh, about belief in God. Is it rational to believe in God? Uh, uh, the 17th century French philosopher Pascal wrote about this, but I'm looking at it from a <coughs> game theory point of view. Uh, if God is playing games with us, uh, should we believe? Should we not believe? What should God's actions be in light of what we say? So it raises some interesting questions in theology, uh, which I think game theory can uh, address and even clarify. Um, and then there are other illustrations in applying game theory. For example, one could look at uh, some of the plays of Shakespeare. Uh, I looked at uh, Macbeth and Hamlet. Uh, in Macbeth, at the beginning of the play, uh, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth have differences over whether uh, the king visiting their castle uh, should be killed. Lady Macbeth uh, incites Macbeth uh, to kill King Duncan. Uh, he's reluctant, but goes along. I try to understand why he goes along and um, look at uh, Lady Macbeth's uh, strategy to get him to go along. All of these characters uh, evince a kind of rationality. They have goals, and they cho choose the best means to satisfy them. And the goals can be anything. If you desire to kill yourself, and you succeed in doing so, you're rational. Most of us don't aspire to kill ourselves, uh, so this isn't our goal. But game theory does not <coughs> have an opinion about whether goals are rational or not. It's only the means to carry out the goals that counts in game theory. And game theory looks at the most effective, the most efficient means uh, when there are two or more players. That is, you cannot make a unilaterally best choice. Uh, that depends upon choices of other players. The outcome depends on the choices of other players. So you have to take these into account. And uh, when you do so, 
uh, you presumably can make a more considered decision about what is uh, appropriate, what is not appropriate. So there are other examples to which I apply game theory. In the case of the other Shakespeare play I mentioned, uh, Hamlet, uh, it concerns whether Hamlet, who is usually interpreted to be a vacillating character, indecisive, he can't make up his mind. In my view, he was very strategic. Uh, he suspected that his uncle, who married his mother, had killed his father, poisoned him, and uh, as a consequence, he thought that uh, he should uh, go after Claudius, his uncle, but he wasn't sure that he actually was a murderer, so there's this play within the play uh, in Hamlet, uh, whereby the murder is reenacted, Claudius is in the audience, he's angry when he sees this happen, he walks out, now, Claudia, now Hamlet knows for sure that Claudius is a murderer, but Claudius knows that Hamlet knows. Uh, so they both go after each other, both die in the end in the play. Um, I also look at uh, more modern literature. I look at uh, <clears throat> and Catch 22s in the Joseph Heller novel. The Catch 22 uh, is concerns a pilot, a combat pilot in World War II. His name is Yosarian, uh, who uh, would like to be relieved of combat duty, uh, but he has to get uh, this relief from uh, a psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist, if Yosarian asks, knows he's sane, so he doesn't know, he doesn't want to ask. But if he doesn't ask, the psychiatrist doesn't want to take any action. Uh, and that means Yosarian would have to serve his combat duty. And as a consequence, whatever Yosarian does, uh, he's going to have to serve. And, um, uh, I analyze this game, and this game is typical of Catch-22 situations in which uh, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Um, and I apply it actually to uh, medieval witch trials in which the accused witches could confess or not confess. If they confessed, they would be killed. If they didn't confess, they would be tortured and usually killed in the process. So these are situations which are very frustrating, and I try to understand why people get into these very frustrating situations. So those are a few examples of applications of game theory to what we normally would consider the humanities. What I haven't talked about is history. I've applied game theory to analyze historical situations like the Cuban Missile Crisis in October 1962, the confrontation between the United States and the Soviet Union about the emplacement of missiles in Cuba. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> each player chose strategies. Uh, in the case of the United States, it put a quarantine, a blockade around Cuba, and uh, hoped that this would induce the Soviet Union to withdraw the missiles. Uh, but <clears throat> uh, if it didn't work, the United States was willing to escalate to an airstrike against the missiles. The Soviet Union had to determine whether to uh, withdraw the missiles or maintain the missiles. It wanted a quid pro quo that the United States would withdraw its missiles from Turkey that it faced. And uh, the negotiations occurred over 13 days in this particular crisis. And I analyzed the stages and try to show that uh, game theory gives us insight into why the players, the Soviet Union and uh, the United States and their leaders, uh, President Kennedy at the time and Nikita Khrushchev, the Soviet premier, made the choices which they did, which eventually led to the withdrawal of the missiles from Cuba and a uh, relaxation of the tensions which threatened nuclear war. Some people interpret this game as a game of chicken. Uh, chicken is a game in which two drivers uh, face each other on a road, each may either swerve or not to avoid a collision. Uh, uh, if they don't swerve, they both die. This is a situation that allegedly faced the Soviet Union and the United States if nuclear weapons were used. Um, but in this case, they were able to find a way out, uh, which people playing chicken don't always do. So this is an example of understanding difficult conflict situations and uh, looking for answers uh, and making the best calculations one could. And so uh, I think what I draw from all of this is that uh, 
we often think strategically, but we don't think in terms of using an actual theory, uh, making calculations. We do this intuitively. And I think our intuition, for the most part, is pretty good. Uh, some of the best strategists uh, in the ages past were not game theorists because game theory wasn't even invented. But they made the calculations as if they were game theorists and thinking in these terms. And I think the advantage of using game theory is it makes it clearer what's going on and may actually help decision makers when they spell things out more clearly. They don't just rely on their intuition.